Hi, um, this is Dan Hilton. I'm actually doing a video response um, with a bionic dance. Um, um, well, this is a uh, basically video about um, um, me getting labeled a UFO believer in a sense. Um, now, the, the, this is a video response to um, bionic dance um, the video. This is I mean, this time is small, which is basically um, her video response to. Um, some chap trying to convince atheists, etc., to rip up the, um, the Bible book. All you Satanists, all you who claim that the Bible has no power, start ripping them up. Let's march on Washington. Let's stop it. Um, but my, my, my video response is not um, about discussing the stupidity of this um, chap trying to rip up uh, atheists, etc., uh, books. Um, but it's on a, the basis of um, Bionic Dance saying that um, the UFOs uh, don't exist. And as well as the, the, the label saying. Um, Provide giving you a label as your uh, believers. Um, but again, there's a lot of things that I think are bullshit that I tend to leave alone. I mean, don't get me wrong, I think it'd be great if UFOs were real. I think it'd be really interesting if Bigfoot were real, if the Loch Ness Monster were real. I think it'd be really cool if we lived in a universe that was actually just littered with paranormal things. I think that'd be so much cooler. It's just, well, they're not real. The evidence would show us that, you know, those things existed if they did, but they clearly don't. And those things because the UFO believers, as the UFO believers, as the UFO believers, as the UFO believers. So, um, yes, <laughs> UFO believers. I am, um, um Sorry that this video is rather late, unexpected, because uh, I've been busy with an astrobiology course, and I've been quite busy with some of my artwork, particularly. Um, this digital painting called the Cedars of Dawn, but I've never I didn't put on live stream. Uh, I probably didn't feel like it. Um, uh, I just wanted to you know take it easy on it uh, and things like that. And um, and I spent quite a long time on it, um, longer than I expected. Um, I just need to uh, speed myself up. So yeah, it, it's a so. Personally, I don't like being given the name uh, UFO Believer when I know that extraterrestrial spacecraft exist and extraterrestrials, from my own personal experiences. And on occasion, I have managed to capture some of my experiences on video and photo with my own equipment, um, such as my mobile phone, iPod, and handheld camera. Actually, one of my first photos of my with my new camera was actually um, done with these things in the sky and. Um, and the chances of actually having, you know, um, uh, having captured these moments are, are quite uh, rare to, you know, average everyday experiences. But if you're alert and you're sensitive and you're very much aware of your surroundings, uh, you tend to um, notice these things. Most time, people have so much on their minds, they'll go on the ground, probably the people. Um, if anyone's dropped money on the way to town, so on and so forth, uh, for the, you know, sleeping other people and things like that, um, I just, anything that moves, um, through traffic, um, anything that moves tend to, um, attract my eyes, in a sense. Um, so, um, I even, uh, myself had a few experiences with an extraterrestrial, being when I was 11 years old, and where she actually put me on the lap. And stroke my hair, she was about uh, 7 feet tall, shoe size 12. And even um, the evidence of my experience was left because of the footprints had um, been imprinted on the sand in the garden. And um, we managed to, well, at the time, my parents managed to um, make plaster Paris cards of it. Um, unfortunately, because my parents were quite religious and all that, they perceived the, uh, the being of being an angel at first. Uh, when, when I, when, as a being, um, Kind of uh, motivated me and 
you know, I developed my art and all that. Um, 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 I started to draw, you know, sort of nudes and sensuality at the age of um, I'm not 10, 11. Anyway, at the age of 11. And um, from the age of 11, um, when my mother discovered the drawings, uh, she confiscated them. And as well as confiscated the footprints with a cut inside my head. And, um, um, and then suddenly the perception of this being the an angel turning to a demon. I was rather upset. Um, and when I moved, the convenience got lost because um, I was going to keep them. And, um, you know, you know, as, you know, because I wanted to keep them. And, uh, when I was in my time, I probably would have shared them. Um, someone I trusted would trust, uh, who wouldn't destroy them or something like that. Perhaps, um, you know, give them to a university or something to actually examine them and things like that. Um, but, um, they got lost, which is really tough. And it's a loss of evidence. And it's quite frustrating, um, when you confront uh, people that point uh, they didn't say uh, call me loony and things like that you know I know, I know I experienced things and I had physical evidence and all that and, um, but it, um, you know I know that there is also evidence out there that people have actually experienced um, um, similar things and they have managed to collect evidence it's very difficult to collect evidence um, because of this many people like to um, you know hoax these things uh, this uh, this like thing causes more uh, confusion and misunderstanding um, and as well and turns the uh, subject uh, into a uh, taboo and, um, and things like that. Um, there's, also, there's also lots of... I don't know, my notes haven't been there. <laughs> Remind me to remember. That's why I wrote notes. I don't think I'd say everything and then go. Okay, um... Uh, so yeah, the plots of Paris Castle were all absolutely good lost because not only did they have sentimental value, but also um, a loss of evidence could have supported more an understanding of the existence of extraterrestrial people. Um, we wish to understand uh, rather than uh, you know give them provide the evidence um, about extraterrestrial people. Well, those people who uh, would want to, who would like um, to understand rather than um, want to believe as expressed on their bumper stickers. You, who are in most cases gullible at spending money and books by authors who create hoaxes and cash in on the subject um, and because the subject is at a touch and go moment um, in uh, the mainstream media and often uh, it's joked upon and things like that because um, you know, it's just a very taboo subject. Uh, in a I understand that you have not experienced um, such most things. Uh, I do am aware that you have experienced something, but you um, not too sure about it. Um, uh, that when you saw lights in the sky, and this was what um, provided in one of your older videos. Um, and there's the thing is, um, there's also a large database of information on the uh, of people experiencing and seeing things and managing to film and photograph. And extraterrestrial and spacecraft to top secret military aviation projects, which do include non conventional means of air and space travel. Which I am trying to make people aware so people can stand up and protest and demand that this technology uh, be given to the people to better our lives and not rely on fossil fuels uh, and things like that. The thing is, there's a difference between a belief, understanding, and knowing. We one believes in something, they agree something entirely purely on faith. You know that, you know, and you've expressed that in your videos. Without thinking, without thinking <laughs> and questioning something, which is, you can agree happens in theism and religion. Understanding something in... Maybe one of the my notes. Understanding something is when you question something... Uh, yeah, understanding something, you understand something is when you question something and find and look for data, evidence, uh, and information from a variety of sources. So you're not relying on your own experience, also, but you also look for other people who experience uh, similar things, which, um, which most occurs in most sciences. Um, 
in science. Science exists on the basis of understanding life, the universe, and everything. That follows logic and reason. And um, knowing is when you personally uh, experience something and live through something, whether you can explain it or not, be it ordinary or extraordinary, um, be it ordinary like um, getting on a plane or a bus um, or talking to a celebrity or even having a birthday with a politician. And so to the extraordinary, such as seeing a um, extraterrestrial um, physical. In your statement saying, um, God believers claim they know it's true, that God exists, we don't accept the word for it either, um, not without proof, not without evidence, why should we say this different? The thing is, my response is, the thing is you cannot compare the existence of extraterrestrial and the spacecraft to that of the deity uh, in God believers. Why? Um, have you seen any photos and videos of God? Um, they are not <laughs> done by CGA or some form of optics version. Um, uh, or video editing. Is there any physical evidence like footprints, um, clothing, instruments, and things like that that um, have been left behind by God? No. Uh, even science gives uh, the evidence that um, the existence of, of God is actually a myth. Um, and the support of this mystic belief um, is is generated from the faith-producing part of the um, human brain. Uh, some of these parts are built in prejudices, um, often placed in by the upbringing of the child, the religious parents, and um, so they get deleted when um, the child realizes and questions uh, the reality of things um, uh, and discovers the non existence of a deity. Um, uh, to compare uh, extraterrestrials and God uh, is, is a really a silly argument. Uh, to, uh, put a more thought to it. The thing is, there is science to support my experiences. Besides the evidence I have of photos to videos, to genetics going from others such as military, pilots, etc. The subject of astrobiology, which I'm studying, helps with the understanding of the subject of extraterrestrial life, regardless if it's intelligent or not, and its requirements, as well as the number of exoplanets that have been discovered. By, the, uh, by, by, these plant, by this planet society and scientists who are working so hard to come up with something, when they have not had a personal experience themselves. As time moves on, um, their ideas and possibility of life and other planets increase on, what the, uh, on the basis of what they discover. If you think that Earth is the only planet that exists with life in the universe, it's, going, it's like going back into time where people believe the Earth is flat, um, and to the time when Bruno um, was burnt at the stake for speculating, um, since he didn't have a telescope at the time, he had a telescope at the time. Than the uh, to document um, its effects. The existence, uh, he expected actually the existence of uh, Earth like planets in the solar system. So he was basically following the concept of just logic and developing a theory. Um, <clears throat> so he was actually going to accept. So I kind of feel like I'm encountering the sort of um, reaction um, from society, even though um, it's, a, it's kind of like a society kind of evolved. In handling the, the questionable um, to to mainstream um, the questionable, um, where if I was back in time and saying that other people look at other planets, <laughs> I probably would have been burnt myself as well. Um, so basically, I'm just doing the same kind of thing, but I'm not really doing burnt uh, at the stake, but I just get kind of like um, intimidated, mocked at, and um, to the point. Um, really good, um, where um, people, you know, don't think really. Um, um, so basically I feel like Bruno here, I've been confronting the population of people who um, label me as a UFO believer, and do not say that UFO, and do say, and they say that UFOs uh, don't exist. There's even the Drake equation. Which is a mathematical model to estimate roughly how many extraterrestrial societies may exist in the galaxy. No. Um, um, I confronted much of um, the extraterrestrial daily work ideology society, and it does not go well with uh, medical people, which is the psychology um, who have not dealt with other um, experiences, um, people who have had incident. Inc 
incidences with in particular schools. Um, the funny thing is, more people in the po population uh, believe in the existence of ghosts, demons, angels, deities, um, than understanding the existence of extraterrestrial life. Um, now, how many of um, the labeled UFO believers uh, in those categories um, um, are actual genuine extraterrestrial experiences and people who actually logically understand the existence of extraterrestrial life? The thing is, extraterrestrials are not paranormal or supernatural. It's basically, you know, um, it's something like that. So, so, I would kind of ask you, please don't call me a UFO believer. Um, actually, I would prefer, uh, and it makes more sense this, to call me someone who's actually experienced possible uh, extraterrestrial intelligence and is in the question until you have enough evidence to agree or disagree. Um, because I don't mindlessly believe in things by faith, like religious people, as I'm very much like myself, in questions and things. Um, it's just that I have had. Out of luck, I had more extraordinary experiences than more. So you do get uh, UFO believers, who are people who believe uh, in extraterrestrials um, without, without, on the basis of faith, like they hear somebody or they watch something on TV and then they, without question, like, believe something. Right? And then you get people who understand um, the existence of extraterrestrials, looking through uh, data, uh, video footage, um, credible stories, particularly um, done by you know like military pilots, um, people like that, and then also um, um, as well as a mentioned implants, um, which is a physical object that can be um, put into a person, but it's, just, um, it's sort of like a little nanotech device, and um, there's um, Evidence of that. And, um, so, people who haven't experienced something would actually understand there's quite an amount of um, information uh, with this um, evidence um, to support. Uh, there is a lot of taboo about the, 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 the evidence, and the thing is because, number one, um, the British people actually say things, and um, this kind of like, makes people like, you know, um, question and think, okay. That one's fake and that one's real. I would try and real that one's fake. Especially this present day with um, uh, Photoshop and uh, CGI and things like that. Um, you can actually pinpoint uh, um, what is CGI and what um, if you really get down to the nitty gritty. Um, um, so, um, you yeah. um, So, uh, and then you get people who actually generally experienced um, extraterrestrial intelligence. And um, from this, they actually know uh, life um, um, is not a unique phenomenon on planet Earth. Um, it's, you know, it's just you know, quite diverse throughout the galaxy. Um, so, yeah, there we have it. Um, and then I'm going to give you some uh, video clips. Um, this video got long. Um, video clips um, uh, with my evidence and, um, and the evidence of others. Uh, so on. So this means the video is going to get a bit longer. Than expected. So, okay, much up. And, um, yeah.
it's actually bright enough. It's too far. Fucking shit camera again. Get it, look, it's got a thing on the top of it, look. Yeah, I see that. It's like a serpent thing and then somebody on top of it. Can you see that? Yeah. Thing? No, I see it. So this is my camera, this is absolutely a fucking iPod camera. You need to get a I know. That was really stupid. <coughs> uh, where's the uh, thingy going?
What the hell is that thing? Dad, move. Oh, sorry. Dad, move. What is that? I can't What the hell is that thing? Oh, I'm sorry. Dad, move. What is that? Skeptics say that UFO eyewitnesses are not credible. But what if the witness is a policeman trained to observe and to tell the truth? A police station in Cleveland, Ohio. This is the actual official statement recorded by Detective John Healy. I have with me in my office at the present time, Detective John Healy. Healy's going to describe in his own way uh, of an incident that had occurred last night. Okay, we, uh, we left Port Columbus Airport at about 10.30 last night. It had a steady red light on its nose. It was cigar-shaped and it had a green light shining down out of the aft end. 
Detective Healy flew in a routine training exercise the previous night. Over the town of Mansfield, Ohio, the men encountered a UFO. We were almost involved in a mid-air collision. I noticed a red light, but I thought it would be the port wing of another aircraft. We saw it uh, kept coming at us. It didn't have any wings. It didn't have any, any windows, as you would see in a, in a, on a conventional aircraft. The other crewmen saw the UFO and documented the incident in an official military report. But Healy insists on coming forward to talk publicly about this life-threatening event. This object moved at a very fast rate of speed. It saw us probably before we saw it. It just tracked us because we had all our navigation lights on and running and blinking. Over the town of Mansfield, the UFO got so close, the pilot had to initiate evasive maneuvers. The pilot put the uh, helicopter into a dive. The chopper descended at 500 feet per minute. When it reached an altitude of 1,700 feet, the UFO shot a tractor beam at the helicopter. This was just a humongous green light just shining down on us. In a, a, very, a very definite cone shape. You could look at the light, you could actually see the beam of the light. Suddenly, the light somehow pulled the chopper up towards the UFO. It scanned us for that instant that it hesitated over us. It scanned us. Then it took off. After the object went off to the west, the helicopter uh, pilot noted that although he had been in a descent, and his controls were in the configuration for a descent, the helicopter had actually risen to 3,800 feet. The object was under continual observation for five minutes, perhaps even more. Further confirmation of the UFO incident came from two people on the ground, Irma DeLong and her son Charles. The kids kept hollering, they wanted to stop, they wanted to stop. She finally stopped the car and I jumped out. I remember uh, the whole top of the sky was lit up a dull fluorescent green. To be honest, it scared me. I was scared at that time. But I didn't, it didn't sink in and it was still really something, a UFO. This brought together two groups of witnesses that established the exact location of the event. We were able to uh, compute the flight path of the helicopter. J. Allen Hynek, the director of KUFOS, the Center for UFO Studies, interviewed the crewmen at length. Their drawings of the UFO were strikingly similar. More disturbing was their sense that the UFO intended to destroy them. After the encounter, the helicopter, like the crewman, was never the same. The aircraft number was a 15444. That was the aircraft we were in that night. Uh, she was never any good after that. The radios would never work right. Uh, navigation instruments, nothing. What caused that damage? Some said it was simply a meteor. Well, there's no way this could have been a meteor. It lasted for five minutes. No meteor takes five minutes to cross the sky from horizon to horizon. Detective John Healy and several witnesses saw a flying saucer. Its purpose, perhaps deadly, is still unexplained. Thousands of miles away, other rural towns in Idaho and Washington are plagued by UFOs. Over there, at the top of those trees over there, there was a bright light shining. And, and it was like uh, they were putting on a, a laser show. They turn up on their side and you see like laser beams of lights. I called the Post Falls Police Department. And they came out and asked us what we thought we were looking at. At this point, I handed him my binoculars and I said, look for yourself. He immediately reported the same thing that we were seeing. In Post Falls, Idaho, the police switchboard lit up with calls reporting the same craft in the sky. Well, it was on graveyard shift. And we had reports that people were seeing twinkling lights. They were kind of nervous, said there's something floating in the sky. Well, the first thing we did was run outside and look and see if there really was something in the sky. And there was a white light. And there were colored lights kind of rotating around it. There was red, green, blue, purple, and a gold colored light. 
and they were flashing systematically. It was very shallow like two shallow saucers placed together. The only lights on it were on the bottom. In the center was a recessed amber light. A Post Falls local shot this compelling videotape. It shows one of the crafts in the sky. In order for the camera to pick up the object, the light emanating from it would have to be unusually bright. Not far away, near Lake Newman, a man was almost blinded by an unearthly light. So I was driving down West Newman Lake Road a little before midnight. All of a sudden, a blinding white light came from directly above me. I slowed down, opened the door, looked up. Uh, all I could see was a bright, round, incredibly bright light straight above me. Immediately became incredibly frightened, and I drove away as fast as I could. I headed uh, straight to a house not too, too far away down the road, a friend's house. He was so scared. He was just, I've never seen him shake. Yeah. 